Dear friends, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to study the morphology of the maxillary third molar. So, what we are going to study in this video lecture? We are going to study the chronology or the timeline of development of the maxillary third molar. We are going to study the number of this tooth and various tooth notation or tooth numbering systems. And at the end, we will do the landmarks uh, or the key identification features that are present on the maxillary third molars. So watch this video till the end. So the timeline of development, uh, the maxillary third molar, uh, the calcification of this tooth, it begins uh, at the age of seven to nine years. And the enamel, it is completed by the age of 12 to 16 year. So this is the last permanent tooth that usually erupt. Um, the third molars, they're the last tooth to erupt. So they erupt usually around the age of 17 to 21 years of age. The root is, it is completed by the age of 18 to 25 years, depending on the age of eruption. So after eruption, usually it takes around two to three years for the root to be completed. Now, what is the number of this tooth and various tooth notation systems? So this is the maxillary third molar of the right side. And this is the maxillary third molar of the left side. So universal numbering system, it begins with one. So this is number one. So the number of uh, the, uh, this tooth uh, in the universal numbering system, it is one for the right maxillary third molar and 16 for the left maxillary third molar. Now, uh, what is the number of this tooth in the Palmer notation system? So in the Palmer notation system, the numbers, they start from the midline with one till the last tooth, third molar, uh, and the number is eight. So this symbol, it indicates that it is the right maxillary quadrant and number eight, it basically indicates that it is a third molar. Same for the left quadrant, the only difference is this shape and here, also, number eight, it indicates that it is a third molar of the left quadrant. So this symbol indicates that it is a left quadrant and left upper quadrant, maxillary quadrant. In the FDI notation system, so in the FDI notation system, so this is the maxillary third molar of the right side. So the number is one eight. Uh, the first Number one, it indicates that it is a right maxillary quadrant, while number eight, it indicates that it is a tooth number. So the complete number is one eight, and this pronounced as one eight, not eighteen. Similarly, on the left side, this is the maxillary third molar of the left side. So the number is two eight, not twenty eight. So the two means it is the left maxillary quadrant and eight indicates the tooth number. So the left maxillary third molar, it is the, the it is designated as two eight. So uh, this tooth, uh, the maxillary third molar, it vary, there's a lot of variation in the size of the tooth. So sometimes it is smaller than usual, sometimes it is larger than usual. Similarly, the outlines or the shape of the tooth, it is also very much variable. And at the same time, position is also variable. Sometimes the tooth it is malpositioned or it is positioned, it has an unusual position in the dental arch. So there's a lot of variation in short in size, shape and position of the tooth because maybe due to the lack of space in the dental arch and in the, in the age of eruption as well. The crown, it is smaller in general as well as compared to the maxillary 
first and the second molar so the tooth it is a smaller in size particularly the crown the roots they are also short and they are fused with each other unlike the maxillary second molar in which the roots they are separated from each other so the third molars they show most variation in development and and they are the most commonly missing tooth in the dental arch as well so let's study this tooth uh, from the buccal aspect now the crown first study the crown of this tooth cervical occlusally so this is the cervical line and this is the occlusal surface so the crown is shorter cervical occlusally and it is also shorter it's just also a bit narrower mesiodistally so this is the mesial side and this is the distal side so again third molars they are the crown it is shorter cervical occlusally and narrower mesiodistally you can see the roots there are three roots but usually the roots they are fused with each other and they function as a single root you can see all three roots they are fused with each other and they function as a single root if you look at the slant or the inclination of the root so in general the roots they are inclined towards the distal side for example if you look at this mesial root so there is more inclination towards the distal side similarly this is the palatal root sometimes referred as lingual root again there's inclination towards the distal aspect if you look at the crown surface so on the crown there are two cusp on the buccal side so this is one cusp the larger cusp it is known as the mesiobuccal cusp this cusp now this is smaller cusp is the distobuccal cusp in between these two cusps there is a developmental groove now in the background you can see a single large cusp and this is the lingual cusp of the tooth so this tooth has three cusps uh, usually three cusps now let's study this tooth from the lingual aspect uh, sometime uh, referred as a palatal aspect as well so if you look at the crown surface so only one large cusp is present that is known as the lingual cusp uh, otherwise the lingual cusp surface it is a smooth with no developmental depressions unlike the second molar in which there's a lingual groove between the two cusps so no lingual groove or no uh, any other developmental depression is not present on the lingual surface the crown and the root they converge on the lingual side so because of that convergence uh, you can see the part of the mesial surface and part of the distal surface from the lingual aspect of the tooth if you look at the mesial aspect so on the mesial side the roots they are fused so these roots they are fused with each other and they appear as a single large root so the root proportion it is um, considerably shorter as compared to the maxillary first and the second molars in which the root length it is larger as compared to the crown uh, though this is a mesial side but on the third molars the cervical line it is nearly straight you can see this cervical line it is nearly straight these are the two cusps that are visible this is a mesiobuccal cusp and this is a single large lingual cusp so let's discuss the distal aspect so if you measure the length of the crown from cervical line to the distal marginal ridge then the length of the crown it is a, a little less as compared to the height of the crown on the mesial side because this measurement it is less on the distal side therefore 
the, uh, the part of the occlusal surface, it is visible from the distal aspect. In fact, from the distal side, you can also see the part of the buccal surface as well because of the convergence of the crown on the distal side. There, uh, Sometimes there are root bifurcations on the distal side in the apical third. So you can see the roots, they are dividing into two. So this is the distobuccal root and this is the palatal root. So, but this division is usually in the apical third portion only. Now let's discuss the occlusal surface. So from the occlusal surface, the most common crown pattern is the heart shape type for the maxillary third molars. So you can see this is a heart shape pattern or heart shape outline. So this is the most common um, outline because of presence of three cusps. So this is one cusp. This is the larger one is the mesiobuccal cusp. The smaller one is the distobuccal cusp. And this is a this is a single large lingual or also referred as the palatal cusp. So two buccal and one lingual cusp, which is large and very well developed. So let's discuss further. So if you look at the occlusal surface of the crown carefully, you will see there are a lot of supplemental grooves apart from the main grooves, like this is a central developmental groove. And this is the buccal groove. So apart from these main grooves, you can see a lot of supplementary grooves and these supplementary grooves, they give the crown surface a wrinkled appearance. Now, the third molar, this is the heart shape pattern. Another pattern uh, in which the third molars, they show four cusps like the second molar. So in that case, the third molars, uh, molar, it appear more like a second molar in which this lingual cusp is divided into two cusps in which there are in that case, there are two cusps on the lingual side. One is the mesial lingual, and a smaller cusp is there, known as the distolingual cusp, like the third, like the second molar. So, thank you uh, very much for watching this lecture. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Please give us your feedback in the comments. Again, thank you very much for watching, and stay blessed.